What's going on YouTube? Josh here from The Creative Wade and today's video is going to be a little bit unorthodox and you may hear my dog bark in the background. I just wanted to get out some content and this has been a very requested video for quite some time now since I made my video a little bit over a year ago about switching from Studio One to Cubase as my primary. So I want to go over some pros and cons and why I made the decision that I did over a year ago to switch to Cubase. And yes, Cubase Pro is still my number one DAW to go to. I still use Studio One for some really quick edits and stuff like that. But if it's going to be any type of in-depth, really deep production, I'm hopping into Cubase Pro. Now to clarify, this is for Cubase Pro only. I cannot vouch for anything under it because I've only ever had Cubase Pro, so I don't know for sure what the differences are, what comes with the base model and the mid model. I think it's artist and entry or something like that. I have been super busy, so I'm sorry for the, the delay in this video, but I have been working on so many different productions. I did a country production that was my stuff. I did a heavy metal production. It's been kind of crazy. I will leave links in the description for the Spotify if you want to check those out. First thing I want to go over anytime someone asks me about uh, Cubase or Studio One, I usually recommend Studio One for people to get started because it's $20 a month is 20 or 25. So if you're looking to get into production really fast, just hop into Studio One. Um, it's $20 a month. The perpetual license is way cheaper. It doesn't come with as much stuff by far as Cubase Pro. But to be honest with you, if you're just getting started, you're not going to miss any of that stuff because you don't really know anyway. And if you learn Studio One, you can always transfer your knowledge over to Cubase. They're very similar and their workflows. Their workflows might be a little bit different. Cubase is a little more in depth, but if someone knew Studio One really well, you're not gonna have a problem switching over to here, at least at the very minimum without a Google, a quick Google search, you know? I'm going to go over uh, some of the reasons why I like Cubase over Studio One, and Cubase Pro is my number one that I kind of lean toward. First thing, stock plugins. What I did here was I basically went back and I uninstalled all of my third-party uh, virtual instruments, my third-party VSTs. So these are all bone stock. Here is Studio One's stock effects, which are pretty not bad. I mean, they're not great. Uh, I don't know of any Studio One plugin that I will go to that's stock over anything that's third-party. Fat Channel is really good. And again, guys, this is my opinion. Okay, don't roast me in the comments, but this is just my opinion. Supervision, this thing is amazing for mastering. You can customize it, you can do anything you want with it. Like this looks bone stock, but let me double click on this setting. And you see all the presets you've got. So you are you can customize this, you can add them, you can remove them. It tells you everything you need to know, but that can this thing can be a video all on its own. But we're gonna try to move on and I'm gonna try to get to uh, some of the the kind of the meat and potatoes of it after I go over these plugins. Here are the plugins inside of Cubase Pro. Again, this is Pro, okay? A few things I'll show you that they don't have or that they have that Studio One absolutely does not have. Um, Studio One's got saturation, VST, amp rack, compressors, the usual suspects, you know, like any most DOS come stock with this kind of stuff, but just look at how many different ones you get. And this is not trying to throw shade at Studio One or PreSonus. You know, Cubase has been doing it for a long time. They've been around for almost as long as Pro Tools. This EQ frequency, let's take a look at this thing. This is pretty cool, right? This thing is absolutely amazing. It's dynamic, just like the EQ is in Studio One. It's got the keyboard roll, just like in Studio One, so you can see what octave you're hitting at or whatever. Here's one thing Studio One doesn't have. Oh, and here's the dynamic part. Like, you can turn the dynamics on or off. Here's one thing Studio One doesn't have. Check it out. Well, I wouldn't do that for low cut, but stereo, check it out, mid side. There you go. Here's your mid side, there's your mid, there's your side. Select that one, and if you move these around, One's mid, one side, side, mid. I know you can do it in Studio One if you pipe it all in and everything, but what I'm talking about is a dedicated side chain, like a mid side, I want it to be that way. If I wanna pick mid side, if I wanna pick stereo, I want it to be in the EQ. Studio One does not have that. I always had to use Pro Q3 in order to get that option. So we're gonna move on. So frequency is absolutely better than the Studio EQ or whatever it's called. Uh, in Studio One. I don't even use Studio One's EQ, um, the Pro EQ. It's not terrible, right? It's not bad, it's dynamic, which is awesome, but it just it's still lacking a couple things for me. Uh, but it basically, guys and girls, this 
I can hop into Cubase Pro from beginning to end, mix, master, do a full production, and I don't feel like I need to reach for a third-party plugin. Mind you, I have the third-party plugins that I prefer to use, but in a pinch, I could use these, and I would be happy with the result. Now, here is something that I want to show you guys. Here is the vocal chain, right? This come out in 13 Pro, so... Uh, yeah, 13th Pro. Yeah, I come out in 13th Pro. I had this last year. Um, so basically, they have pitch correction built in. Uh, this is their version of Auto Tune. Cubase has had this forever. They've had it for a very long time. Studio One still doesn't have a native, like real time pitch correction thing. Not a deal breaker for me, but I just think it's really cool that they give you the option. This channel strip is freaking amazing i mean you can do everything it's got gates it's got you can come down here to imager you can make it wider or narrow uh, you might have phasing issues if you get too wide but it's really cool so you got delay reverb two dsers which i like to use two dsers you got your saturator and you can this is all in one track or one channel strip guys you can just use this on your vocals and be done with it it's got pitch correction everything i love it uh, let's see here. I, I seriously, I use it all the time. I don't reach for any plugins anymore because everything is right there for vocals. So let's see here. Uh, comment down below if you guys would like to see some actual mixing tutorials on how I mix anyway. They're tutorials. I like to say that they're tutorials on how I mix. I don't know if it's the right way, but it's the way that I do it. And you can check out my Spotify stuff, those albums that I just told you about. And you can listen to what I do with vocals and what I do with music. All of those projects, by the way, were done in Cubase. Uh, let's see here. I've got my list in front of me. So track setup. Track setup is is very similar. You just right click, and it looks like there are a lot more here, but there's really not much more uh, because they have their setup. Like if I right click, oh look at this short little list. Yeah, well they they put their list here also. So a lot of these are still over here in Cubase. I could go into the Arranger track. The Arranger track is way different than it is in Studio One. It's so much more powerful than the Arranger track over here or uh, what is it called? The pads or whatever, the notepads or sketch pad or whatever it's called in Studio One. I don't even use it because it's, it's very clunky to me, uh, in my opinion. So let's, I'm trying to move along kind of quick uh, just to go over the main things. So the, the main things that I like about Cubase and the reason that I stuck with Cubase Pro. So chord pads. Here is something that Studio One does not have, and I wish they had it. Let me actually go ahead and expand this. Here are chord pads, right? I don't know music theory. This helps me out a great deal. So let me actually add a, an instrument track really quick, and we'll just call it whatever. Um, so here are my chord pads, right? All right, F, okay, so I can go to circle of fifths or I can go to list, and it'll give me most likely to least likely, right? Obviously by the green down to the red. So, okay, I wanna, this one, all right, so click and drag it and there it is. And this will work with the chord track also. Studio One has a chord track, it's super awesome, but Cubase Pro's chord track is like on another level. There are so many features, again, that's something on its own. I'm just trying to give you guys the reasons why I like Cubase Pro and not so much of an in-depth tutorial. If you want any tutorials like that, drop a comment down below. I would be happy to make a video based on each one of these things because they seriously could take a whole video up just to go over all the features that they have. Okay guys, so I clicked and I drug an instrumental from one of my country songs that I just released and here I want to show you a little bit about Vary Audio, and it's a monophonic pitch correction tool. So keep that in mind, it's not melodic, all right? So whenever I click here, you can see this little drop down for Vary Audio, and whenever I click this, you can it's going to analyze everything, and there are my notes. This is so powerful, I use it all the time. Now I do have Melodyne Studio, so I use that more so. But this is very similar to the version of Melodyne, I think, what is it, Artist or Melodyne Essentials? This is very similar to what that is and what uh, PreSonus used to give you. I don't know if they still include it, but this is amazing. Again, this, this comes with the middle tier of Cubase. I know that for a fact. It doesn't just come with Pro, so you can buy the, I think it's like 350 bucks version, and it comes with this. This is another reason why I really, really like uh, Cubase Pro if you're going to do some serious editing and things like that. 
I'm shooting from the hip on this, guys, so I'm sorry if it's taking a little longer, but I just wanted to make sure I go over a lot of things with you guys. Uh, again, if you want an in-depth tutorial or review, I can give you one of those. I'm already recording time 15 minutes, 16 minutes, so I'm just trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Here's a marker, right? Let's scroll over here. Let's add another marker. We're gonna add another marker. You can change the colors of everything, including the markers. Let's change the description up here on the left, by the way, is how you change the marker description. So we'll call this intro, right? Intro, there we go. And then we'll call this one, not intro, because I'm original like that. So you can come up here, click, change the color. So there you go. Well, why would that matter? Okay, well, I'll show you why it matters. Look at that line that just popped up. You can have your tracks as small or as large as you want them. And this little line, let me pull back over here, will show up through the whole thing. This is one feature I didn't think I would like and I absolutely cannot live without it. Every time I hop into Studio One and I've got like 30 or 40 track sessions, I really wish it was in Cubase. I wish the client would have uh, just sent me the stems and I could have put it in this and that way I can see what I'm doing. Let's hop over really quick the Arranger track. So if you right click inside of Cubase, it's gonna pull up this little menu. I'm holding down right click and then you can get your pen, your pencil. So there's one, there's one, there's one, right? So we got A, B, and C. Now I'm gonna right click and then click the mouse again. So I can click this up here. We'll call this, actually, you know what? I'll just keep it A, B, and C, right? So this arranger track is off right now. So if I were to start this, I'm gonna mute that so you guys don't hear my instrumental. If I were to hit play on this, it's gonna play per the usual, right? Normal. Okay, no, nothing fancy. If I were to hit this little power button, and then open the arranger track. This part, guys and girls, if you are someone who does a lot of revisions or you're working, you're an artist who is, you're a producer, you're producing instrumentals, people want different sections to be longer or shorter, you don't have to copy and paste anything. So we're gonna take A, B, and C, right? Okay, so maybe I want A to go two times, right? B once, and then C two times, but check this out, I want A to go another one time. Okay, let's try that. Let's hit play and see what happens. See how powerful this can be for reorganizing anything and you don't have to change anything, you don't have to cut, you don't have to paste, you don't have to do any of that stuff. You can just use the arranger track and if you wanna go back to it, just turn it off and then it'll go back to regular default. I use this all the time for client revisions. If I'm making an instrumental for somebody, I use it constantly. The, hey man, can you make this verse longer? Can you make this chorus shorter? Can you add a bridge? You can add pieces and then clone it over, copy and paste it over, and it'll play that part for you without actually chopping your session up and moving things around. And later down the road, which I'm gonna get into now, and this will be the end of this video because I'm already at like 20 minutes of record time. So if we come over here to file, right? Export, export audio mix down. You can export the arranger. You can have as many arrangers as you want, right? So, okay, I want, here's that revision, another revision, another revision. I can export them all out without actually changing anything in my session, but just by grabbing these and moving them around. And you're like, well, okay, yeah, but I like this, I like this arranger, this arranger chain, right? Let's open it up, flatten. If you see how it cut these up, it cut my song up. If there would have been multiple pieces, it would have just committed everything to it. I literally never do that um, because I don't need to. I, I have no commitment right here. I can always change this later. But if you wanted to, you can go in and just flatten it. Once you have, hey, your client says, this right here arrangement is awesome, which I don't know why you would think that, but all right, cool, flatten it and commit it. Or you don't have to. So. These are the main reasons why I really like Cubase and I switched over to it. If you guys want a really in-depth thing, please drop a comment down below. You can just do a quick Google search, find something you're interested about. I'd love to help you out. If I went through all of Cubase, we would be here till tomorrow talking about different things that it has. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you out a little bit. 
Drop a comment down below. I'd love to know what you think and what video you would like to see next or any questions you may have. I will catch you guys in the next one. God bless.